Republicans have seen where this kind of rhetoric can go. Why are they still pushing it? Well, uh, it's good to be with you, Jonathan. Uh, just taking a step back, as you said, next week will mark one year since the violent domestic attack on Congress on January 6th, which, as you know, and as you articulated, was the worst assault on our capital at Citadel of Liberty since the War of 1812. And there are many of us who warned in the days after the 6th and later on the Senate floor during the impeachment trial that we are facing a radically new threat in the kind of forces that combined to attack our government on January 6th. And I believe, as you said, that the future of our democracy is on the line. Now, I can't explain to you why uh, so many uh, Republican politicians, as you mentioned, have been stoking the flames, but I do think many of the stories that you reference demonstrate or crystallize the way in which those forces and the misinformation, including the big lie about the 2020 election, really have metastasized over the course of the last year. And much of that has not been on the front page of the newspapers, but over time, the disinformation has permeated the minds of more and more Americans. And that is in no small part due to social media, the echo chambers that exist there, and uh, as you said, politicians who are fanning the flames. But it's disconcerting and it should concern every American and it is all the more reason why the January 6th Commission's uh, work is so critically important to the future of our country. Well, Congressman, though, do you think it's metastasized to the point where you think we could see another January 6th style insurrection? That's certainly a fear that, uh, that I have and that I know many of my colleagues share. I mean, ultimately, the assault on January 6th was not just a riot, as you know, it was an attempt to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. And if we aren't vigilant and don't take the threat seriously, it could very well happen again, as we warned uh, during the course of the second impeachment trial that you referenced. And it's exactly why we established the Select Committee, because we needed a, a comprehensive investigation as to who organized the attack, who paid for it, how they nearly succeeded in ultimately overthrowing a presidential election. They failed to do so, uh, but uh, as we know, they vociferously tried to do that, and why they did it and how we must organize ourselves to prevent anything like this from happening again. Mm -hmm. That's why the committee's work is so crucial. Well, let's talk about the January 6th Select Committee's investigation. I want you to listen to former Senator Claire McCaskill on our air earlier today. We know Trump was watching TV. He watched TV all day long for four years. He watched all the channels. We can go through and we can put the images at a specific time. And we can then fill in the text messages, the phone calls that were flooding the White House saying, get him to call them off. Give me those facts. Give me those timeline and give me a jury. You know, Congressman, that is an incredible—she uh, lays out an incredible set of things that the committee, I hope, the committee is already doing. But what what's the benefit of a time like this, of a timeline like this? Uh, well, a couple of things. First, I have great respect for uh, the former senator, and I think much of what she described, uh, the, uh, the impeachment trial ultimately did glean uh, for the American people. Uh, the team of uh, House managers did— much of uh, that work, as she's describing it, in terms of compiling the timeline, but there are missing pieces. And I suspect that the committee is doing precisely uh, what she has described, putting together, obviously, by virtue of the document requests that they have propounded and the testimony uh, that they have gathered so far, uh, putting together those missing pieces so that the American public and the Congress can better understand precisely what happened on that day. And obviously, uh, the inaction uh, of the president in a few, cr you know, critical few hours uh, during uh, the course of that assault on the Capitol, his dereliction of duty uh, under the Constitution in terms of not taking steps to stop uh, the attack. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more for us to learn about the weaponization of the Department of Justice uh, that happened during the course of the prior administration vis-a-vis -vis what happened on January 6th. So there's still a number of unanswered questions, and I think that we are going to have answers to those questions in the coming months. Congressman, the, the anniversary of the insurrection is next week. And I'm just wondering, um, where will you be on, the, on January 6, 2022? Uh, I'll be in Washington. I'll be back in Washington, D.C. I mean, look, I, I think it's important for all of us to take a step back and reflect about the events of January 6, 2021. I was uh, in the House uh, that day in the Capitol on the House floor uh, during uh, the attack on the Capitol. And obviously, it was a harrowing day for our country, for the Congress, and for our republic, ultimately. So I, I'll be in Washington with my colleagues, and 
uh, you know, we will be doing the, the people's work.